Hey guys, you're watching a real-time footage of a art challenge, and the art challenge theme was Silver Spoon. And currently, right now, I'm uh, starting off the sketch, and we'll be having a guest artist here today. You want to introduce uh, yourself? <laughs> hi, I'm Picapedi. I do animation. Uh, most of the time, it's frame by frame animation. Uh, most people know me from the uh, smash hit Good Morning Baltimore uh, that premiered at BronyCon this year, and uh, from very shorts and anthology like A Heart for Sweetie Belle and the Friendship is Manly Saddle Ship. So. Yeah, the, he's a great animator, guys, so I'll tag in a link below to check out his work. And uh, yes. he and he's a fun troll too. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I love I have a lot of fun. Yeah, um, on the internet. Uh, you ever see his trolls online? Don't take it seriously. It's just it's just. I'm mostly sarcastic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not not to not to animated uh, animated James sarcastic, but pretty close, I think. Yeah, but this whole stream it will just be random talking. We'll we'll be attempting to be talking about the process that's happening uh, in front of your eyes right now. Like, uh, I th I threw down some basic lines, so basically where I want the uh, silver spoon to be. As yeah, so you can probably tell, she's on a giant spoon. You know, just silver spoon, silver spoon. And right now I'm going pretty rough. Since this is a thirty minute challenge, I just want to throw down some lines right off the back without have to worrying too much about like uh, accuracy. Uh, it takes a lot of a lot of practice to know where you want your lines to be. I mean, Picaviti here he draws six hundred <laughs> drawings, and just for one second of animation, he definitely knows how to throw down the lines. Yeah, I like to periodically come into his streams and uh, poke fun of him that he's spending all this time on one single image, and I'm like, well, come on, Citra, I've already drawn fifty images. You have to catch up. I remember. Yeah, with I roomed with him uh, at, at some cons before, and a lot, a lot of cons actually. Yeah, um. <laughs> and I've seen how fast he can work uh, traditionally. It's just pretty much right off the back. No, no, do uh, sketch lines for foundation lines. It's just like bam, right off the back. And yeah, cartoon expressions are. I don't know. Very easy for you. Well, I mean, well, I mean, we could talk more about the uh, the different approach from illustration to animation, because uh, I see a lot of people they uh, they have the idea that animation, especially like frame by frame animation, is the same as illustration drawing, but just more drawings. And yes, that's technically true, but not necessarily the case. Uh, there's I mean, different levels, I say, of of animation, uh, the complexity of it, because there's a lot going on underneath that a lot of viewers don't see. For your work, for example, Citra, you have you have to rely on how well it looks as is, as a static image, uh, so people can see it and hopefully want to buy prints of it. Animation... You could spend hours, weeks, months, months um, on on making and crafting the perfect frames, but if your character moves wrong, it, you still have a bad animation. Uh, to put it in perspective for a lot of viewers, imagine during an episode that Rarity, just giving her lines, starts bouncing around like Pinkie Pie. And it's not part of the plot. It's nothing is, you know, the characters pretend that they don't even see it. It's just suddenly Rarity is bouncing around like Pinkie Pie. That's, I mean, I know it's puppet-based animation, but let's say for this example, it's all traditional animated frame by frame. Uh, you would, the animator would be drawing Rarity on model. It would look exactly like Rarity, except it's just not the right drawings, and therefore it's out of place. It's weird. Like what? And all the viewers would be like, "What? Why is Rarity <laughs> bouncing around? Like, is this? Is she under a magic spell? Is what's going on?" And then if they never draw any attention to it again, everyone would just be pointing that out. What was that animator thinking? <laughs> so it's a little. So speed is is very important in in animation. Um, that's why, uh, you have to get a lot of drawings out all at once. And speaking of speed, uh, currently 
you see what happening on the speed drawing, I'm already adding in the, the base colors. Uh, I, I didn't like clean up the sketch yet because you know uh, I, f I feel like it's okay. I just I, I it's you can tell that's that's uh, silver spoon on the spoon. Let's just add in the colors right now underneath on a new layer, and then start adding in the uh, the highlights uh, after I put in the solid colors. And, oh my goodness, I really hate adding in the, the fills mm -hmm. <laughs> of the for the, the drawing. Though imagine trying to do this. 600 times <laughs> yeah um well if i was animating the scene i definitely would not i mean right right straight away from the first frame i would not start coloring it um because what if the animation's bad what if the movement's bad i would have to throw it whoa what's going on here we're looking through uh, it's pretty much the other drawings i had open <laughs> i'm just oh, switching okay. the photos <laughs> i'm switching the photoshop yeah i like coloring in photoshop it feels a little bit more natural to me than sketchbook well, for now. Yeah. I, I I mean, it's all preference. I've seen uh, people do really good work with Microsoft Paint before. And right now, I colored the lines blue and set it to multiply layer. So uh, it's not just pure black I'm working against, so I'm fighting against the black lines. So it's a little bit more easier to color, in my opinion. Uh, how would you recommend someone who wants to learn how to draw faster? You know, besides repetition, what do you think they need to focus on? Um, One of the... Well, one of the things is um, just to just, uh, a lot of it's a psychological battle. A lot of new artists will be afraid to try something, to try to draw something uh, quick because they're afraid of it looking bad. But I mean, honestly, if you draw a bad drawing, it's just a bad drawing. You can always draw another one. Just always keep that in mind. You don't have to be perfect every single drawing. I mean. I have a folder full of uh, incomplete drawings and uh, bad drawings I never really uploaded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's okay to have... I mean, even Lauren Foss herself, she says she... Uh, she always... I always, like, make this quote. Basically, you got to get, like, all the bad drawings out of you first oh, before yes, you can definitely. start getting better. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I noticed about your art, you're very good with color and texture in, in your drawings. And I, I personally struggle with color. Uh, what do you, I know you talked about this in the stream once and you say you mess with the color until it's right. Yeah. What would... It's like you said, there's a lot of psychological aspects and also experience. Like I know right now I'm using a, a pure white background. She's on a uh, blue spoon and she has purple eyes. So I'm thinking for shading, uh, I'll use some purple. So it'll help complement her, uh, her eyes. You know, throwing similar colors all over the canvas really helps the appeal of the image. And uh, since, you know, a light background, it's uh, a good idea to hi uh, bring in up the highlights using a blue, uh, a blue brush set to screen mode. And that's what I did on her body. It, it lit up her gray body uh, with a little touch of blue in it, that, so it's not just pure monochromatic. And every now and then, I, I just, just for the fun of it, to see what works. Maybe I'll throw in a green, maybe a different color, see if it works. If it does not, I just throw but that color that's, away. That's one of the interesting things I want to ask you about. How do you know when it works? A lot of, oh, there I come into the uh, <laughs> chat. <laughs> Hi! Um, but how do you know when it actually works? I, I see a lot of color tutorials that I, you know, you read up on triad colors, complementary colors, split complementaries, and it's good in, in, to learn all of those theories, but practical application just kind of falls short. A lot of, at the end of very, a lot of t color tutorials that I find, it's, well, in the end, you gotta, you know, feel it out and uh, go with your gut feelings. Well, as a new artist, how do you develop your gut feelings? How do you know what works and what doesn't work? Well, unfortunately, that actually has to come from the, all the fails. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pretty much fail a ton of times for and able to uh, develop that gut feeling. Kind of like with you in animation, you uh, you get the, the proper feel of how how much uh, in between frames you need, or how much of a squish or stretch the 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 character needs to move to feel more natural and all that. And, like, yeah. I don't have the weight down when I try animation. I don't have that down yet. I, like, I don't have that gut feeling yet. 
And it's the same with coloring. Uh, it's a lot of experimenting, and you just gotta have to be not afraid to for the drawing to look bad. You just gotta have it's- to uh, experiment and fail, experiment, fail, experiment. Oh, hey, that looks good. I had to remember that. To maybe even take notes. Like, hey, these colors looks good. Uh, also, you had to take into account of the background. Uh, like right now, I'm using a white background, but later on, I'm going to be adding in some color splash to the back because uh, I don't really like pure white backgrounds. It's kind of strange to the eye. And- I want to I want to segue into what uh, before we get out of here. I want to segue into something else um, about about when you know it's working, when you know it's failing. I see a lot of upcoming you know, illustrators, uh, new artists, and they, they make art and they can't really figure out why they're not getting notes. They're not getting likes. There's really no feedback loop. Um, I think that's one of the advantages over animation. If you do something wrong, uh, audience, your audience is wonderful and they go out of their way and send you private messages about how much it sucks and what you got wrong. So, but as far as like illustrators, animators, people just, there's so much out there that if you're if you're trying to get better and you're not sure what is missing from your art to get it to be that level, you just kind of get overlooked and ignored. Um, so what advice would you give to upcoming artists to get feedback, that kind of feedback that you, you naturally get with animation? Because, I mean, animation, you can take a step back, hit play and you're just like ah it's really bad you, know, you pretty much have to uh go out of your way of, of uh, asking artists yourself even well not even artists the other people too and as for uh critique feedback and, and i'm talking about not like oh this is good that's good you did a good job here no i'm talking about like look uh, feedback that will help you be better like you know, like uh sit citra senpai can can you look at my artwork? <laughs> I try to do that whenever I can. Like I provide feedback on a stream when someone comes in, but I, I don't have it all the time every single time. Yeah, that's a um, it's hard to uh, to give feedback because I do want to help everyone, but sometimes it's just you just don't have time. You got to get art done on your own. <laughs> right. Uh, it's it's also important to get feedback like halfway through the drawing or before the, you start coloring because. Uh, uh, you become blind to your own mistakes real easily. Like you're using, you're used to seeing your drawing uh, for how, I don't know how many hours you spent on it. So you be you you can't see the the errors or issues with it, and that's why it's also good to sh- show it to other artists. They they have fresh eyes and they's like, oh, her leg is too long or the anatomy is a little off here and there, or like uh, uh, you're you're a little bit monochromatic. Maybe you should add some orange instead of a, a yellow. Well, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, even if you're not an artist, you can still provide feedback to an artist because uh, you're still a fresh pair of eyes. Like, like just like, like look at the picture and see what's what's throwing you off, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I do that a lot, um, even non... I mean, it's, it's very... It's, it's, it's hard um, to, to advise animators... Uh, you know, because I live in a realm of animation, so I was all my art techniques and I talk about is just purely animation standpoint. But as far as showing people what you're doing all the time, uh, as far as animation goes, I don't recommend showing like the general public, like, "Hey guys, I just made this animatic, and here it is. Like, what do you guys think?" And okay, I'm gonna go work on the animation now. That's not a good idea to do for little animators, because a ima- What if what if you you had the idea one night, and it's an amazing idea, and everybody loves it. But now everyone's like waiting for you to get that an- animation done, and you have to spend months making it. And eventually, you're gonna get tired of your ideas. So, as far as like showing so many people, um, as far as animators goes, I always advise like showing a few select people of uh, your animation. I've had a my friend Kanashi Panda sometimes shows people what he's working on to get some feedback, and one time someone took the link that he was showing around 
and and posted it on a forum and then then someone took that link and then started making gifts on it on derpy baru and yeah it's it's tough it's tough to be stay with an idea for so long never knowing if actually people like it or not <laughs> what he is basically touching on was uh the expect the uh the expectancy expectations the expectations of a of a illustration and artwork or animation as a viewer tends to be like gimme 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 uh, and if it's not to your to your uh what's it called if it's not up to your your standards or not what you're expecting uh viewers can be pretty rough and not realizing how much effort has been actually been gone into it you think like like oh, animations yes. they think of actually like animation studios where they produce something every week but that's not the reality of it yeah um <laughs> it's, 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 can... it's kind of same for illustrators but not but animators has it much worse <laughs> yeah we we have it we have much worse um you know, I never advise any animators to announce what they're going to do. Uh, animated James, my uh, buddy of mine, he's running into trouble where he made C students. He liked C students back at the time, but he grew as a person, learned more, and then took a step back and looked at his C students. He's like, you know what? This is pretty juvenile writing. Like, this is not really what I want to make anymore, even though I've been spending like two years on this thing. And so when he's told, the general public, I'm not going to continue C students. Um, people who just only seen the first episode and and love it because it's new to them are you know pretty upset that he changed his mind, uh, expecting him to change his mind again with his newest uh, comic, uh, Middle Ground. Um, and that's that's what I'm brushing up here. I think he actually lost subscribers on that too. <laughs> and on the illustration right now. Uh... Right now, I'm using a pink, a uh, purple color set to multiply, and I'm going through the shadows, adding in some uh, faint amount of purples to help uh, bring out the character and the illustration a little bit more life, uh, a little bit more value to it, instead of just using levels, uh, b- making things a lot more darker. It kind of kind of makes her hair look metallic, almost. Was that was that a conscious decision? No, not really. But I kept okay. it. It kind of looked. It looked kind of interesting. It's, it's that's that's the experimental part. And now I'm going okay. through a soft uh, with a blue brush using soft light and adding in some blues to the highlights and to the bottom. Uh, like like I said earlier, I, I was thinking blues and purples would be two good colors to shade and uh, highlight with, and it's coming out pretty good. But. The burn and dodge tool. That's all you need, right? (laughs) That's a good point. Uh, The dodge burn tool in Photoshop, a lot of artists use that. And honestly, uh, you don't use that to shade. Uh, If you really want to have control of bringing things up to light and darker, you use that that, after you're done drawing. Because uh, it it really helps bring out the picture, but not for actually rendering it. Like I, I use a, the screen, uh, the screen blend mode in blue to help push back in depth the handle, the the spoon, because I feel like having a pure white background, uh, m- making some pieces of the illustration look like they're far off makes it have like a glow effect. That's the only benefit of having a white background is making things look like they're heavenly. And now I'm experimenting with a with a bit of a hazy brush with a different color. I tried yellow, like no, that doesn't work. So I'm just playing around with the hue saturation and see what color I like as a good background color. Because like I said earlier, don't really quite like white backgrounds, but not making it too dark either. <laughs> I've seen a technique that a lot of people do. They start with a 50% gray uh, for your background so it doesn't change the colors around. Do you ever do that? Uh, I repeat the question. Well, I know in um, from if you put dark colors against a, a white background, they look different than against a black background. So you know, colors can feel different when they're matched up against different values. Uh, I I was asking if you ever start out with a fifty percent gray, so your values of your colors don't change yeah every now and then i do like at the very beginning i have a uh a low 
a, a low a low saturation color as a background, so it doesn't mess with my uh, my color choices. They're like it's it takes a lot of a lot of uh, practice to not ha- like make the character accidentally blend in with the, with the background. But uh, when you when you uh, color and shade a character with a pure white background as a beginner you may end up with very low contrast of values because when you like drop in some darker colors all of a sudden your character is way too bright that's because of the issues of the white background but if you start with a 50% gray and render the, uh, the character and then add in a background of white black color uh, it's it, it holds up on its own a lot better plus it's it's easier on the eyes yeah it's it's a uh, like trying to imagine uh, trying to look at a a red card in pure bright sunlight it's blinding your eyes no 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 just uh just just tell the kids go stare at a light bulb for hours on end because that's literally what you're doing on a on a monitor screen with a white background right <laughs> <laughs> and you see right there i just pulled up some levels to uh to bring in some uh, more values and uh contrast not values uh i don't do that until near the end and sometimes i don't need it but i felt like i need a little bit more uh, the darks need to be a little bit more darker without changing it too much. And it looks like it was almost uh, near the end. I got the, the background colors in. Right now I'm just messing with the uh, the background, the highlights, trying to trying to get a good feel of um, how I want things to be. And I don't know, it looks like I'm experimenting with the brushes right now. <laughs> ah, yeah. I, I'm just making a little white glow around the spoon so it helps separate it from the background a little bit. Boy, uh, we have about three, four minutes left. Anything else we should probably talk about? Um, well, you know, I'd promote my own art on your channel, I guess, taking this opportunity. I Please check out my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe, like, comment. Things in the doobly-doo, as yeah. I say. If you, like, uh, if you like animation and if you like uh, MLP, and not just MLP, he does other stuff too, uh, definitely check out his work. He has he has a great sense of humor, especially with these his recent Sweetie Belle and the grown men animation. <laughs> <laughs> Art for Sweetie Belle, yeah, I love Looney Tunes and just the thought of uh, having a Peppy Le Pew character come up and and just start macking on Sweetie Belle was, was just really funny to me. So <laughs> I just wanted to see it, what I could do, and how far I could push its face. Oh my goodness, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are, if you, uh, if you ever slow it down to frame by frame, it, it, it gets weird. Uh, there's, uh, w- one part I was drawing these frames and see the thing with animation, you kind of have to keep track of all the body parts of every single character and what they're doing between the frames and where they're going and where they're moving because if you don't get it right then everything starts like strobing and looks all edited and netty unless that's the effect you're going for but for this particular case i wasn't and so i'm drawing those frames and i'm just thinking there where's his ear again okay so wait on on the I put it on the back of his forehead? What? what? Uh, okay. Uh, what's Sweetie Belle doing right now? Okay, she's, uh, the stomach's falling out, and just keeping all track of all those folds was quite a challenge and quite fun. Um, and that's your guys' preview of what an animator goes through their mind when they're actually <laughs> animating things frame by frame. And it looks like I'm adding in the signature. Well, guys, uh, thank you guys for watching this, uh, real-time footage of this um, speed paint challenge of Silver Spoon. Uh, would you uh, tell me guys what you think in the comments below? Did you like uh, add me adding in a, a guest like this? Uh, talking about random things about art, uh, trying to give some tips and everything. Uh, did we talk about too much of some, one thing or would you me and uh, future guests uh, focus on like a, a theme let me know in the comments below subscribe and be sure to ch- uh, check out the link for Pika PD. definitely definitely support any animator because they definitely need all the support they can they yeah. work a ton they work a ton of effort they work they put a ton of effort into what they love yeah i i i mean i feel like i mean this would kind of be i, I do want to point this out um i know with uh with your art 
there's the whole sustainability aspect where if you do a really good piece and everyone loves it, you can sell prints at at a, a convention. Animators really don't get that sustainability aspect. <laughs> it's, yeah. We can definitely get into that, but uh, thank you for joining me, Pika PD, and this was very fun. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's fun. So, woohoo. Yep, see, y'all, see you guys all later. Ciao. <laughs> Bye.